recall from the first video on House of Quality that there's actually four Houses of Quality in the House of Quality template or in the QFD template. This video we're going to focus on House of Quality number two. The first thing we want to make sure is that the CTS is the critical to satisfaction from House of Quality one. Make their way over to the second tab or House of Quality two, and you'll notice that it's uh, simply linked from the uh, House of Quality one. So the first CTS specified in House of Quality one was an armrest of nine to ten inches. Second one was seat cushion is not removable, and so forth. Now. This, the process for House of Quality 2 is the same process for House of Quality 1 in as much as for every CTS we are now going to spe specify at least one functional requirement. The functional requirement, this is a difficult concept to get across sometimes and so for new belts and other uh, product or process designers or service designers there's a tendency to drive towards the design itself. The functional requirement is the bridge between the requirement and the solution and it's done this way in, to, in, in order that uh, a given solution is not determined too early in the process itself. So functional requirements, recall from the, from the lesson, the functional requirement is nothing more than a description of how the thing, the solution, has to function in order to meet the CTS. And it's solution agnostic, right? So we, we haven't presumed what the solution looks like. We're just trying to describe how it has to function in order to meet that requirement. So for each CTS, I've got one uh, FR or functional requirement, or at least one, and I've got these numbered so again I can keep track of the functional requirements and the CTSs they belong to because when we get further down into House of Quality, I want to be able to look at a given design requirement or process variable and I want to be able to uh, trace it all the way back to the originating CTS or high level need, but specifically the CTS. So we, we here we put in our functional requirements and then the next thing we do is we, we then uh, score them uh, and we're going to score them using this correlation key where for each CTS uh, we want to determine whether or not the CTS, there's any correlation between the CTS and the functional requirement. Either there's a correlation, it's weak, it's moderate, or it's very strong and of course as you might expect and we learned previously I'm looking for a diagonal of nines because it tells me that I have at least one functional requirement uh, for each CTS and I haven't overlooked anything. Now, when you have multiple functional requirements for a TTS, CTS, it won't exactly be a diagonal, but nonetheless, um, I want to see something like this. So as a, as a master black belt, when I look at a, a, a QFD, or house of quality, I always look for the diagonal to make sure that all of the requirements from the previous house are looked after by the current house requirements. And then also I'm going to go in here and score the rest of them and I'm only looking for the unique combinations of course so I won't I won't look at, there, or there's no value here rather, pardon me, there's no value here because I've already looked at this particular one uh, over here actually. Okay, once we have that, then we go up and look at the conflicts, and again, uh, we're, what we're trying to determine is to what extent do uh, these functional requirements conflict with one another, because if ultimately if we're driving towards a design, and, these, and this design has to include all of the functional requirements, if they conflict, if I'm looking for something that needs to be both hot and cold, I've got a conflict there, because I've got two different uh, CTSs and I want to identify those here so that I can start resolving or at least identifying um, wh where the issues are and perhaps be thinking about then the solution that can accommodate both hot and, and cold. And then off to the side here I've got I can put in my um, uh, competitive uh, information so I've got competitive benchmarking I can put the, put the performance of uh, our uh, 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 hoped for uh, solution so for example I've got competitor sofas here I've got uh, goals and targets um, the ease with which things can be improved uh, the importance to the customer and awaiting and this allows me then to start evaluating the extent to which our solution stacks up to the competition. 
and uh, off to the f further off to the right, I can specify direction of improvement so I know whether I'm trying to increase something or decrease it, make it uh, larger or smaller. And then down uh, near the bottom, it's just a summary of um, the extent to which uh, a given uh, CTS uh, contributes to um, meeting the uh, functional requirements. So it's, it's a way of prioritizing, but not really. Remember, the CTSs are prioritized by the customer and, and not by the designer. But it gives us a way of uh, in indicating the extent to which both the CTSs and the functional requirements are, are correlated. Now, once we have this, we've, we've got, um, and the most important thing I suppose here are the functional requirements. What we, once we have that, then as we'll see in a subsequent video, uh, these will be related to, or uh, transferred rather, down to a House of Quality 3, so we can now start putting designs together that meet the functional requirements. So hopefully you can see the progression from high level need to something quite specific, which is a CTS to something a little more specific, which is uh, the functionality of this product or service. And then, as we'll see in the next, uh, in the next uh, session on House of Quality, the actual designs that uh, meet those requirements.